honeys. Hi dolls. Welcome back to my channel. It's Ayana if you're new here. If you're new here, if you're returning. Hey girl, hey. Guess who's back with another mukbang? Yes, y'all, I'm back with another no, another mukbang. I know it's been a while. I have not done this in a while because, as you know, I had surgery and it affected my swallowing. But I'm back and I think I'm okay now. It's not 100, but I'm still going to try to do this. And I do have a story time today. Y'all, this stuff smells so good. I got seafood oil in a bag and it comes with um, crab, corn, crawfish, and shrimp. Crab legs, corn, crawfish, and shrimp. I don't eat crawfish, so I don't know if I'm going to eat those, but we'll try to see. I don't even know how to eat those, y'all, so I don't know. But I got a lemon buttery sauce mixed with garlic butter. Oh, yes, I'm so excited to try this. So I got my notes here, too, for my story time because y'all know I'll be a little confused. Make sure you grab yourself something to eat. Come back and have a seat, honey, because I got a juicy story time. It's good to me. Y'all, this smells so good. Let me get a bite first. Mm. I got this from this place called Boil Shack. Delish. I didn't feel like cooking. But anyway, the story time I have for today on um, what I have to drink here just a raspberry lemonade, simply lemonade, the best. Very refreshing. So, what I have today for story time is from True Crime. It's about an NBA, NBA player. It's kind of old, but I'm just, well, not just now, but I watched this story about six months ago, and I've been wanting to do a story time for it, but my voice was gone. It still ain't all the way back, but, y'all, the story time was so good to me and juicy because he was a celebrity, and I never heard of it, maybe because I'm not a sports, but anyway, y'all may have heard of it. His name was Lorenzen Wright. And they titled the name of his story Operation Rebound. Rebound. And when I get to the end, you'll understand why. So, yes. So, Operation Rebound. Um, so, Lorenzen was a high school basketball star, I guess. He, was, he grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. <clears throat> he grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. And... Um, he was a star of his town. They called him the Prince of the What did they call him? Prince of the Court. Because he was just was a good b-ball player, I guess. Um so he was a high school basketball star. Eventually, you know, he became to be an NBA star. After high school, he got drafted. He was a seventh round draft pick. I guess he played for different different basketball teams until his home state, Memphis, they um added him to his team. Whatever that process is called. It was called the Memphis Tennessee Grizzlies, I think. I don't watch sports, y'all, so don't be mad at me if I ain't get it right. <laughs> but um once he got drafted, you know, <clears throat> the money came rolling in, but what they said was he had somebody by his side the whole time. He had a wife. Her her name was Shira. Shara? Shira. I'm just call her Shira. You know, they must have been getting it on because they had six kids. And what the friends and family said, they looked happy. They actually had seven kids. One of their kids passed away, though. They, she unfortunately passed away from SIDS, I guess. And it affected um, Lorenzen really hard. So he started a foundation for her, like a scholarship or something. And her name, and he got really, dove really deep into philanthropy and remembrance of his daughter. That's great. His career lasted, I think they said, 15 years. And for 15 years, over the 15 years, he earned about $55 million. That's a lot of money. But for whatever reason, they said, Larissa was a big giver. <clears throat> you know, when you got money, you got family and friends coming out the book. Can I have this? Can I have that? And also, he was in a philanthropy, so that money, I guess he ended up going broke. Probably not our broke, but broke to him. Um, they ended up having two big houses. Going to foreclosure, and though his wife Shira has said, you know, it was a lot of creditors after them. 
throughout all this, they said Mr. Lorenzo had an eye for the women. He had two demons following him, money and women. And it was hard to get rid of. So they ended up getting a divorce him and she which became a shock to the family because they said on the outside, you would have thought they was a perfect couple. They didn't know he was cheating and stuff like that. Well, his friends probably knew, but his parents and everything didn't know that he was a cheater. So at this point, he broke and he lost his family. So he moved to Atlanta. He moved to Atlanta. He wasn't happy there at all. He had spoke to one of his um, high school friends and told his friend, you know, like, I might as well move back to Memphis and be happy with my wife. Clearly, the little tack ass was dealing with and the ATL wasn't enough. <clears throat> so he ended up <clears throat> moving back home to be with his wife. So I guess he still ain't got no money at this point, but he ended up moving back home, but he still had an eye for the ladies. Some men just can't help themselves, I guess. She would have said he had a woman in every at every court. I guess that's in every state. He had holes in different area codes, <laughs> clearly. And she wasn't happy about it, what wife would be. So, he had holes in different area codes. Then one night, one night a 911 call comes in. One night when 911 calls in and you don't hear anything in the background but gunshots. They said they heard some faint cussing in the background but nothing that they could identify. The call went to Germantown. That's somewhere close to Memphis. I guess I've never been to Memphis so I don't know. And they heard gunshots. The police or the dispatch people dropped the ball. They did not trace trace the car right away. I don't know why. It's a shooting. You need to trace the car. Clearly, if somebody is being shot, they can't talk. But they dropped the ball and that call went unseen for nine days. Nine days later, somebody jumped in and decided to trace the car. They traced the car back to like a meadow area. I guess it was like an abandoned area. I don't know. And it was a body found down in the meadow that's been there laying in Memphis heat there in the south, y'all. It's hot for nine days. So the officer in the video said, the officer in the video said that, you know, the body was decomposed at that point because it had been just dead and decomposing for nine days in heat. Probably been ate up and everything. So they found out that the body was Lorenzen. Sad. NBA star gone. Not that if he wasn't an NBA star, he should be gone, but that's just be sad, man. And all because police dropped the ball. Maybe if they don't went out there right away, they might have been able to save him. Who knows? But anyway. She was told police they went and asked the wife that she was told the police that he left home that night. with a box of drugs and a man she never seen before. She didn't know who he was with. There was a rumor floating around town that <clears throat> Larissa had got involved with the drug cartel, so she must have just assumed that's, <clears throat> that's what it was. So, Of course, the police look into it, but they they in the dead ends. When you're in a drug culture, that could be anybody that murder you. And they didn't say corner boys or nothing like that. They said drug cartel. So, you know, that's some deep shit. So they showed an the interview of his mom on the news, you know, begging for somebody to come forward. Who did this to my son? Please help us out. Nothing. Crickets. How does a celebrity get shot and nobody got anything to say? I personally didn't see this on the news. I don't remember ever hearing anything about it. So 
Time goes by. After his death, she writes a book. <clears throat> Five years later, the book is called Mr. Tell Me Anything. Now, y'all know. Mr. Tell Me Anything. That's That title right there tells it like she was pissed. So, in the book, she had cool stories about her being abused. She did on multiple times. She even wrote something about her wanting to commit suicide from the infidelity that she was facing from her husband. Or ex-husband, whatever it was. <clears throat> so, a newspaper journalist, journalist reached out to her. Mind you, this is five years later. Reached out to her and wanted to interview her about her book. So they go to this restaurant. He's asking her questions. Mmm, so good. One of the questions he asked her is, you know, and I'm trying to be rude or anything, but did you have anything to do with your husband's murder? And he asked her that because the book was so detailed about, like I said, abuse and stuff that a woman, a scorned woman has went through. And she, she had told him that 99.9% .9 of that book was true. So he asked her if she had anything to do with it. Y'all, do y'all know this lady said, she never said no. She said, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm an author, and I need to find my husband's killer. Like what, bitch? Did you have something to do with it or not? You wrote a whole book? I mean, you clearly had some things to get off your chest. Who says that? So that drew suspicion with the newspaper guy. So I guess he must have reported it to the police. But the police can't make a case off a book. I mean, that could be fiction. Even though that she said it was 99.9% uh, real. Throughout that time, that was five years later, she had became a minister at a church. She had also married her second husband, um, a police officer, but they gotten divorced. She would clearly, clearly need a man, honey. They got divorced or whatever. So the newspaper um, journalist had asked her, is there anything... <clears throat> Anything else you want to say? Oh, y'all. I'm tripping stuff. And she said there was going to be a part two of the sequel. And uh, the book, a sequel. And it was going to be called The Whole Nine. <laughs> the Whole Nine, honey. And he asked her, was it going to be about murder? And she said, oh, yes. So that book never came out, but y'all know I went to Amazon looking for the first book. And it's listed for like $999. They must have took it off shelves or something. I don't know, because who's paying that much for a book? Uh, not me. But anyway, at that time, she had collected on a million dollar life insurance policy from Lorenzo to take care of her and the kids. But she blew through that money so fast that Lorenzo's dad jumped in and tried to get custody or get the money from her to help take care of the kids because they feel like she wasn't doing all right. She blew through this million plus dollar policy within a year. She did have a lot of kids though, but still. Within a year, she blew through all the money so the dad was trying to get the money back because he wanted, you know, some benefits from his son, I guess. So, as she blew through his money, the dad took her to court. He lost, of course, because money goes to the wife. He lost. So, Shira gets married again. This time she's married to a music producer. This is her third marriage. Some California music produ producer. So, they also show Lorenzo's personal assistant on the show. His personal assistant had voicemails that she was threatening him. Voicemails that she was threatening him about cheating. Like, if I catch you doing this shit again, I'm going to kill you, basically. And, you know, people say that out of rage. I've said it before. I'm going to kill you. I don't mean it. 
Ain't nobody worth me going to jail. But anyway, she reported it to the police and she also let you know people hear it. But they still have no evidence. Two years later, that's a total of seven or eight years at this point. They get an anonymous tip call and he called in telling them that <clears throat> there's a murder victim at the bottom of a lake by their house. So the crazy thing is, the night of his murder, her, the neighbors saw her outside in the backyard burning up stuff. It's in July in Memphis, Tennessee. It's hot as hell out there. What is you out there burning, Sheila? But yeah. So the, the police have like a diver search, five days of a diver search. They told the neighbors that they were doing some type of training, so they went to alert the neighbors or whatever. They find a gun in the bottom of the lake. The gun comes back registered to a man named Billy. Billy, these crab legs, small. Of course, they run Billy's information. And he's connected to Miss Shira. He is a deacon at her church. She's a minister and he's a de deacon. What's some shady church people, y'all? But anyway, they go and arrest Billy. They find him at a convenience store. They showed him being arrested actually on the video. And <clears throat> after they arrested him, I don't know if he snitched on Shira or whatever, but she's next. And being arrested. They both denied it. Yeah. They both denied it, but I mean, I guess they had enough evidence to prove it was them because they found a gun and they know each other. Plus the anonymous tip. So they showed them both being arrested in court. Lorenz's mom comes to court, and of course she's upset. You know, how could you do this to my son? And the judge is like, ma'am, we, we know you're hurt, but you have to respect the court. And it's just sad because this is someone he's supposed to be, have trusted. But they say that they think she tried to kill him before. She just never succeeded. This time she did. So her and Billy, wait, first of all, she came to court in a wheelchair. They don't know why. They said for health reasons, never documented. So I don't know if she really needed it or what, but she came to court in a wheelchair. That didn't matter. They still charged her ass with multiple murder charges. They didn't say how much time she got, but she got multiple first degree murder charges and conspiracy and all type of shit. As well as Billy. So they probably not ever getting out no time soon anyway. So and they also said the person that caught in, they were never able to identify that. So they're thinking it's the third person that has something to do with the murder, y'all. But they don't know who the call was from. So the case is actually still open. It's not closed. They called the person a third co-conspirator. Because how would that person know what happened? They either had to be there or somebody had to tell them. Them two are in jail, but there can still be somebody out there. I guess that's, you know, it has something to do with the death of that man. Sad. So now that's six kids without no parents. Mom in jail and the father is gone because foolishness. So yeah, y'all, that was the story. I thought it was so good. I watched it a few times actually because I just wanted to know like, hey, you ever cheat on me? I don't, damn, I'm not going to leave you. I mean, I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to leave you alive. But they said she was abused and all types of stuff, so who knows? already happened but I thought the story was good and I'm gonna have it linked down below if you want to watch it it's called Operation Rebounds on True Crimes and it's about NBA star Lorenzo Wright so comment down below and let me know if y'all like the story any more stories you that you think I would be interested in watching that you guys would be interested in hearing about leave those comments down below also make sure you subscribe before you leave I'm full y'all now plus I want some dessert so yeah, if you like this story, this story time, make sure you comment down below and let me know. Comment any other thing you'd like to, 
any other story times you'd like to hear about while I do these mukbangs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to share with your friends, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoy. See you next time. Bye.